All right, what's going on today, guys? So on this video, I'm gonna share with you how to start a fire, a suburban fire, okay? Not an urban one, not a bushcraft one, just a regular suburban fire or something simple you can find in your house. And, uh, and everything happens to be wet today, which is a real problem. It really, really downpoured yesterday. So let me show you how to do this, okay? So number one, uh, easy thing you can get is duct tape, okay? So you just get some duct tape, uh, roll it into like little logs, get a lighter, and then get yourself some stuff you would find in suburbia, some <clears throat> some sticks. Uh, we, we have some sticks and stuff here, but to be honest, these things are, are, are a little bit wet. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because all this is soaking, soaking wet and it's gonna smoke a lot, I'm gonna have something flat here to start my fire on. Now you gotta think about, there's three things. E even this is wet, look at this, see how wet it is? Um, so you, there's three things that make a fire really go, okay? Um, oxygen, fuel, and heat. The biggest problem in this kind of a fire is going to be heat. You're just not going to be able to create enough heat. There's zero wind right now. Um, <clears throat> so now that I think about that, having something <clears throat> like this to fan will really help me with air. Fuel is going to be wet, but I'm not going to have a problem with fuel. It's just, it's, it's, it's not going to be uh, dry. So, so the biggest problem is going to be heat. Now here, this is why duct tape is really good. These three things of duct tape will burn for a really, really long time. And what I want to do is I'm going to place them kind of in like a, on top of each other, something like this. And we'll see how it goes. It's, it's kind of sticky and weird. So it just depends. But what my plan is to start a center of heat and then start to pile up materials on top such as cardboard or whatever um, if you were more bushcrafty you would try to get sticks and stuff like that uh, best thing to do would be to get fat wood or something that you know or sap something you know is going to burn um, and uh, anyway so if you pan over here penny to these bushes okay that we've cut down these trees um, the best branches all this is wet but the best branches are going to be the ones that are pointing up anything pointing down or level is going to have more water anything pointing up to the sky <clears throat> is going to have it will be slightly more dry it may be 10 percent more dry but it will be more dry okay come back here to the fire lane. okay so what i'm going to do is simply ignite this okay so there's one now once again i'm i'm watching this because i really want it to kind of burn into itself okay so there it goes now i'm going to use this to light this one Okay, so now I've got a pretty good little center of fire or, or heat. Let's see if that's gonna go. So I'm giving it more oxygen by lifting it. There it goes. See, see how I lifted it to give it more oxygen. Oh. Okay, so it, it, it wants something underneath it. So let me try this. Whoops, did I put it out? Oops, okay. So this is this just happens, okay? You gotta be patient. Um, try some sticks so I can use the stick to keep it up off the ground okay so let's try it again I'm gonna go I'm gonna heat the heat source this was already heated so I'm gonna go right back to that okay now what I'm gonna try to do is start capturing this heat with these materials here Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get them to light. Chances are they're not, but what's more likely to light is gonna be little pieces of paper. But what I'm doing here is all of this heat is coming through and is going to start drying out this stuff. You can see how the flames are kind of starting to rise in there. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit of space. So with this kind of a thing, you know, you just gotta be real, real careful. Um, because you don't want to put it out. You can put it out really fast. Okay, so I'm going to try to create like a little chimney effect here. See if I don't, I'm trying, so you got to be careful because you can put it out. Okay, so it's not really catching these this wood. So I'm going to let it come through. Okay, it grew right there because I created an opportunity for more oxygen. And as, as it had more oxygen, then it was able to, to breathe and grow, okay? So now I'm gonna 
if this stuff were dry, I would just throw it right on there. But because it's not, I need more oxygen to heat it properly. Got to be careful with plastic. Someone's going to be complaining about ozone or something right now. I know it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to put more sticks on. <clears throat> and hopefully the sticks start to uh, dry out as well. And um, just need to have more. We need more fuel in there to burn. So that's my biggest problem right now is fuel. I can tell. So, I'm gonna try to just add more fuel. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to add more fuel and get this hot. The hotter I can get it, the more that this, I'm gonna have a chance of this fire staying alive. Right now, I would say there's a low chance. Okay, now, can you hear the sizzles? Do you hear the sizzles, Penny? Yes. Okay, so the sizzles means that the wood is starting to dry. To, to dry, and that is exactly what we want. We want that wood to start to dry. So my center of heat move has moved over here. So now I'm going to just start feeding it over here and creating that chimney effect on this side where it was over here, <clears throat> and it, it just goes wherever it wants to. Uh, it's... It's funny how it is, um, <clears throat> it's like a living creature. <laughs> it just kind of goes wherever it wants to go. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna attempt to do here is to catch more of this on fire and then see if I can get any of this to burn. I don't know if this is gonna work. I need to focus on air more fuel maybe go um to that side or yeah just stay out of the out of the um stay out of the smoke okay <clears throat> so i can hear it starting to pop so that's obviously this going i can also see the flames coming through uh we're recording too uh, i can see the flames coming through the um ooh, just getting in my face freeze back up um, we'll go wherever we need to. So I can see the flames coming through the branches, which is great. <clears throat> Once again, focusing on a center of heat. And the more heat that I've got, the more I have an <clears throat> opportunity here for branches to catch. And uh, for branches to catch and uh and thaw and uh you know for branches to catch and, and dry out is really adding a little bit more uh air okay so i've got this bunch of flame right here now, i don't just want to kill it but i want to try to use it to dry out my stuff. This is a very, very, very difficult thing to do, guys. Um, is to get a fire going with completely wet materials. I'm not overpowering it. Okay, but I'm trying to get the flames to come through the top. And you can see that it's starting to work. Okay. So now I need more fuel. They're drying out and they're cooking. I'm gonna add a little bit more air, a little bit more air. It's a very delicate thing. Um, it can go out at any moment. I'm trying to see where my center of heat, it's still in the same spot, okay? So I'm just gonna keep going up because that it's hot. So the more I can get stuff on the top, the faster that stuff will dry. Adding air with my fan. My improvised fan here. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is try to add some some bigger fuel, being careful to make sure that I don't just put it out completely. Which I, see, I may have just taken too much, too much 
what happened there was uh, I it just I compressed all the air out so it needs more air that's why it all went out you can see here it comes back I can see flame down there on the bottom so you can see I'm thinking of those three things fuel oxygen and heat where's my heat where's my center of heat right I'm gonna get that thing really raging see that was the problem I should have I should have added more oxygen when I'm adding that much fuel I should have add more oxygen all right I can hear it really sizzling which is a great thing if you want to hear okay and now more oxygen I'm trying to keep that balance of oxygen and fuel and now I'm starting to create a little bit of a teepee so that the outer these big fuel pieces or dry out. Okay. And uh, so I'm gonna. This is the problem with wet, is you just cannot get enough heat. Um, if this were dry, this thing would be raging right now. So what I'm gonna try to do is add more fuel like this in okay more your kindling style fuel which will then create more heat which will give you a better opportunity to for the fire to go so come back to my box here see if we can get this thing to go so, I can see flames in there so I know I have a center of heat down in there which is a really good thing that at least we have a center of heat and I need to feel that with more I need more fuel in that set that that heat center And the way I can get more heat is just by doing this, you know. So try to get it lower would be ideal. Got to be careful. Obviously, you can burn yourself pretty bad doing this. Okay. Now, I'm not too overly excited right now on that because that's going to burn up in about... A minute okay but you can see way down in there show them way down in there penny see how that heat is really going good down in there so i've created more heat and as we've created more heat we're giving it and now i have a very slight breeze um it's creating more of an opportunity for this fire to burn and also a really good thing is i can see the smoke is clearing out that tells me that the water, the water has dissipated in most of those center pieces of wood, which is good. So I'm just gonna keep trying to add fuel. So you're really trying to balance, you know, your fuel with everything else you got, you know. Uh, so. I think we're going there so um yeah it's smoking a lot less really good so before i use this up okay so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is let it burn for a few minutes here and what i'm doing with this is i'm just gonna get this stuff ready to put in Although I'm not going to put it in yet, because at this point, if I put too much in, I'm just kind of overpowering it with fuel, right? It'll just be it, it slightly inefficient fuel. Also, you'll notice how close this is. That's for a reason, because I want it to dry out. Got to be careful, obviously, for a lot of obvious reasons there. But uh, you can see now we're 
we're raging pretty good. Uh, pull, show them in there, Penny. In here, over here. Walk over here. You can see the fire down in there. It's really raging good. We've got, um, we've got the uh, the some logs in there on fire. Um, so it's going to be a matter of more heat. And uh, I'm going to use this stuff sparingly to put the right amount of heat on there. And uh, now I'm also going to probably walk away and grab more sticks. And really, I need to get a bunch more of these type of sticks and pile them up about this high probably. And that's going to allow it to just get another bed of coals. What I'm really looking for is that really hot bed of coals in here. And then I can add anything to it and it'll, and it'll cook. So kind of all over the place but if you understand the logic of what I was doing there this is how you start a fire you know it's a dance between those three elements and you're just trying to think like if it goes out why did it go out you know was it not enough fuel not enough heat not enough oxygen and uh, you just keep going back and forth between those adding uh, as as needed um, uh, this is also about that time a couple minutes in where you got to watch your fingers but you can take, have the opportunity to take wood that has burned uh, and the, the edges of them are still out here and you can put them back in. But just be careful because I can tell you that a lot of times the part that's hot will fall and flip out and you'll grab that, especially in the dark, thinking you're grabbing the, the cold end and you're actually grabbing the hot end. So just be careful with that. But anyway, guys, it's the fire's now gonna kind of cook around. You can see it's kind of moving over there. It's gonna move everywhere dry everything out and as long as I keep you can see there's a little bit of breeze coming through here as long as the oxygen's in there there's a fuel enough heat this fire is probably going to go now so I can take five minutes walk and gather more wood and and come back so anyway guys that right there is how you start a suburban fire with just suburban stuff that you can find in your house when it's soaking soaking wet obviously this would be 10 times easier if it were dry so anyway with that I will see you on the next video.